Hello everyone and welcome to today's webcast, The Power of First Impressions. Today is all about making impact with your style and your personal brand. And we have heard in the past that people can actually make their first impression within seven seconds. So what can we do to actually change that and make sure it reflects our personality and who we actually are? Today we're joined by image style expert, Annie Sophia. How are you today? Hi, wonderful, Sarah. Wonderful to be here. Hi, everyone. Thanks, everyone for joining. Um, today is exciting for us. It's the first time we've actually had props in the studio. So thank you for bringing these in. They look lovely and I can't wait to get to them. Me too. <laughs> so first of all, let's get started. Why do first impressions count in your eyes? So we're all visual creatures and whether we like it or not, or know it or not, we all judge. It can be positive or negative, but this is a fact. Mm. So with first impressions, we have only a limited time, up to seven seconds, to wow. make that first impression with impact. That's and, quite scary. Uh, yes, yeah. <laughs> and put our best foot forward um, to give ourselves the advantage of having a great first impression. Mm. Now, you've worked in the corporate world for a long time, so you understand the rise of this whole concept of personal brand and how everyone's talking about it now. And when it does come to creating our personal brand, no matter which industry we're in, it is very important. So how does first impressions and image play into your personal brand? Mm, great question. So first of all, personal brand is made up of many elements. Mm -hmm. Um, so this is encompassing your passions, your vision, your values, superpowers, mm. presentation and your personality. Yeah. So what it is, is it's almost like three mirrors. One mirror is how you perceive yourself. Yep. Another mirror is how you are perceived. Okay. And the third mirror is your authentic self, your truth, your personal brand. Mm. So if you look at all these elements, they all take a lot of time and years, in fact, to really work on each one, really giving yourselves um, a real clear um, aspect of trying to work out what your passions are, what your vision mm. is. But I believe the most important element of personal branding is presentation. Mm -hmm. This is something that can be immediately used to make an impact and to show your true self and your brand. So what then is the quickest and easiest way to be able to present your inner confidence and also your outer presentation? And that is your image. Mm. And then from there, I believe that what you wear, the clothes you wear, the wardrobe you keep mm. is a choice that you can make every single day yep. that can make that first impression with impact and be able to express who you really are on the inside. Mm. So it's really about we know what we want to convey and how we want people to perceive us. So how can we dress appropriately to make that happen? Because all those other elements of branding mm. obviously can take a long time for people to see, can't they? Yes. Whereas your wardrobe is something and the way that you present yourself is something that can be done almost immediately. Um, just on that, I want to give people some context and also mm. some examples. Now, when we think of image, I think of style, I think of wardrobe, like you just mm. said. So um, what is, who are some people out there that you think have a great style or even mm. just a style that is consistent? Yes, great. So what we've got here is some examples mm. of um, public figures, Australian public figures yep. uh, that you may recognise that have a strong personal brand through presentation. So if you look here at the first example, mm. Kate Blanchett. Everyone can <laughs> say that she's got a great style. She does have a great style. And the thing is, though, is it's her consistency across all mm. surroundings and environments. So whether Kate is out shopping, yeah. whether she's on the red carpet or with her children, she's always carrying that uh, style that I would say is timeless, is sophisticated, elegant, it's very clean. Mm. Uh, so that's Kate's personal brand through presentation in a consistent way. Yep. 
So, and we look at the second example. Hugh I can Jackman. look at this one for a while. <laughs> <laughs> <That's fine. laughs> yes, he is easy on the eye, isn't he? <laughs> yeah. So with Hugh Jackman, we could possibly come up with the mm. words of um, a bit rugged but polished, yeah. uh, urban but uh, professional. Uh, he's got that edgy urban look about him, and but he also can ramp it up to a more polished look yeah. depending on his environment. But see if you look at the examples, he's still got that consistent mm. personal brand. He's presenting in a consistent way. Mm. Uh, so that's why Hugh Jackman's a great example. Another one who um, is quite consistent with her look as well, Clover Moore. Yes, our newly re-elected <laughs> Lord Mayor of Sydney, Clover Moore. She's an excellent example because her. we could come up with a style word for her as bold, mm. colourful, professional. But there's actually a real standout feature about Clover that makes her a great uh, example. And that is that she has a standout accessory that she always wears. Mm. And that is her choker necklace. Yes. She wears it in every situation, even when she's walking the dog. Yeah. So because she has that consistency around this presentation and image, mm. therefore people trust her, people expect that from her. Therefore, she has a really strong personal brand. Great. Um, and this one, I think we can all agree that this one is consistent as well, depending on whether you love it or loathe it. Exactly. And uh, I'm getting hungry just yeah. <laughs> looking at Matt Preston, the thoughts of MasterChef coming yes. up. But with Matt Preston, again, he's got something similar to Clover Moore yep. and that his signature piece of, um, of clothing is his uh, cr um, cravat. Yep. So he wears that again in all situations. He also has, a, if you would agree with me, a, a dapper mm. uh, style, yeah. a traditional, a very um, but bold and flamboyant. So even when he's on the farm, he's still got that sort of gentlemanly dapper look about mm. him with pops of colour as well. Yeah, it's always sort of there in the background and I think this takes me back. Um, I was currently reading Naomi Simpson from Red Balloon, um, mm. her book Live What You Love, and she talks about when she first started her career, she used to think of describing words about herself and how mm. red is her colour and how you see her on Shark Tank or even Red Balloon, it's all red, the logos, but ah. what she wears reflects her her brand, her personality and also the company as well. So I think it's very interesting how consistency really is key and that can play a big role over time with people who you're working with or trying to impress for some reason, can't it? Exactly. Mm. And it makes you stand out. It makes people remember you. Yeah. And from that then what we can do is look at the keys of a successful personal brand. Mm. I've come up with the three C's, so it's yep. easy to remember. Great. The first C is clarity. We must have clarity about the brand that we want to express, the mm. style, the image that we want to express. The second C is consistency. We must be consistent by presenting this image at all times, mm. in all environments, like Kate Blanchett, like Hugh Jackman, mm. doesn't matter where you are, just having that consistency at all times which therefore brings you to the third C, which is certainty. Yeah. Therefore, we bring about a sense of certainty, not just within ourselves, which will bring us inner confidence and mm -hmm. um, we can trust ourselves a lot more, but also it teaches others to trust, value and respect you by being certain. Mm. People trust people and people like people if they have a level of certainty about them. Mm, mm. Definitely makes sense. And in terms of creating our personal style, um, in the registration process we spoke about, you know, the three-step formula of how this all works. And yes. um, before we get into that, I just want to encourage everyone out there to get a piece of pen, um, a piece of paper, sorry, and a pen and to start writing this down because this is invaluable and I think if we just talk about it, you're mm. going to forget it as soon as it's over. So definitely make sure you write this down and then start asking other people about it and start to develop your own style. And the thing I really like about this, Annie, mm. is... The fact that we can take this away and it's actional things that we can put into place today, isn't it? That's it. It's all about action steps, everyone. Yes. Um, it's all well and good talking about personal branding yeah. and presentation and this and that. But unless we can walk into our wardrobes this evening and be able to really pick out something that mm. expresses our personal brand, then 
What's what are we doing here? <laughs> <laughs> so the first part of it is personality. So what's this all about? Obviously personality, we know what it all means, but how does yeah. this play into um, our wardrobe and our presentation? Yeah, so personality is the first step of the three-step style formula. Yes. So to create our personal style, to develop and to express it, we need to look at the first step, which is personality. Mm. So what are three words that describe your personality that you can think of that describe yourself? Mm. Often it's good to ask the loved one or Around a good you. friend yeah. or even your work colleague. Yeah. What and keep it words. positive. Yes, <laughs> that's it. Yeah, try to go for positive yeah. words. Um, so words that really describe you. And um, so perhaps I can ask you, Sarah. Yes, and I have had to think about this one because yes. I think it's one of those questions if you are asked on the spot, it can be a little bit confronting. Um, but judging by this list, the three that I came up with, um, passionate, mm. um, sociable and also engaging. So they're all those yes. three words. Um, if I had to choose three from that list, that would actually define my personality. That's great. And I couldn't agree more, yep. everyone. <laughs> She's definitely those three words. Uh, so, I mean, if I look at the list myself, um, I would definitely say um, enthusiastic, yep. uh, creative and passionate, definitely. Mm. I would agree with those. Oh, good. There you go. That's wonderful. <laughs> and if anyone, like I said, write them down, but go to the Ask a Question tab if you like and let us know what yours are. I think it's good to share this information as well. Um, even if we can't see you, um, it's always good just to confirm it by typing it into that yes. box. And yeah, be please part share. Of the discussion. Mm. Okay, so step one, we've got those three words and that's our personality. Mm. Now let's look at environment. What does this mm. mean? So let's think of three environments that mm. we spend most of our time in on a day-to-day -day basis. Mm. Okay. So when we look at it on a whole, we could be um, working nine to five in the office, perhaps client-facing mm. sales meetings, um, networking drinks, events if you do a lot of events, um, job interviews, mm. obviously these shift over time, but what are the three environments that you're in mainly at the moment? Yeah. So looking at this, um, I would say office, obviously, mm. and I think a lot of people within this event would also agree. Yes. Um, Dinners and weekends. So I think for me personally, um, we're at that stage where a lot of people are, a lot of friends are getting engaged or having weddings. So those weekend events that are perhaps a little bit more formal. Yes. Um, and then also being active, going out, mm. having lunch with friends. Um, and I don't know if you're going to talk about the whole active wear <laughs> saga here <laughs> and how that impacts your personality. Um, but try not to do that, I would say, if I had to speak personally. Oh, it's so interesting you say that, Sarah, because mm. I actually did a workshop recently for a group of women from a personal training club ah. and the workshop was from active wear to effortless flair. Oh, sort of we, into it. We, want to, we wanted to try and shift them out of the active wear and mm. get them, you know, rocking their hot bods in something other than the lycra. Yeah, and I think it is that um, mentality. If you are at certain, um, that's why I think it's important to talk mm. about your environment because if you are in certain environments do dictate mm. what you might have to wear, but you still need to let your personal personality shine through um, and throughout the registration process a lot of mm. you actually said you know you might um, your personality and what you might want to wear might be different to the dress code that's mm. at your organization so for example mm. we had a conversation about this and the whole you know what is smart casual for a lot of people and a lot mm. of organizations on the creative side are taking it back a bit and being a little bit Less, ca less, less formal and more casual. So what does that mean oh, as well if on. you're not like that in that environment? So I think there's a lot to be said about environment and how that plays into it. You're spot on. And in fact, that's the thing is I work closely with companies and mm. I talk to the managers and they have an expectation of how their staff um, look yep. and they look at the dress codes and they want them all to, um, you know, wear this certain um, level of dress for their company. But then I talk to the staff themselves and they feel a bit stifled mm. that they're not able to express their personality because yes. things are on the dress code that they're allowed to wear, for example. So it's about, you know, I'm the sort of um, in-between person yeah. uh, negotiating between the two to make sure that everyone's happy. Uh, so environment plays a massive part.
Okay, mm. so once we've figured out our environment um, and from Susan, just on her personality, we're yes. looking at logical, passionate and reliable, oh, which is interesting. Oh, lovely, Susan. How, we'll show you how to actually get that impact um, yes. with some of the wardrobes. <laughs> um, and now style personality. Now, mm. this is, I think everyone, people I know might have a different perception mm. of themselves as opposed to what other people think. Do you usually find that? Oh, absolutely. I, I have a questionnaire for all my clients and mm. I ask them, um, you know, what are your favourite features about yourself mm. or least favourite or what do you like about the style you're expressing or dislike? And the, um, the positive, the, the what do you like about yourself and your personality and your uh, style personality is often just a word or two. Mm. And for what you don't want or what you want to change is often a paragraph. Wow. Yeah, so it really um, it tells me that a lot of people um, a lot of people struggle with um, looking at their their best their best um, features mm. and their most positive aspects. And often that's why, for example, it's good to ask other people mm. um, what they, how they would describe you because often it's not the case that we feel that about ourselves. Mm. So it's great to get, um, get opinions from others. Yes. They could be completely different to what you think. Exactly. And that is the perception area of how you're perceived and how, um, how others perceive you in mm. the personal branding um, that we talked about and um, displaying our personal brand and our authentic self is that all we need to remember is that if we're, uh, if we discover and if we um, take time to really work on what is important to us and then we then learn how to express that, then you're not going to please everyone. Yes. So they might still have a perception of you that's, you know, not ideal. But the thing is, as long as you know you are mm. putting your best foot forward, that yeah. you're expressing your true self. And I think that's interesting. And before going, um, before talking about this webcast and we mm. spoke to each other, um, we started talking about the personality that's step one. And I started to look at it and think of the three words to describe me and then realise that half my wardrobe is black. So am I really showing that personality? Yeah. So for me, it was a bit of an eye opener. It's like, oh, well, myself, I mm. think that about me. But what I'm wearing might say a few different things. I couldn't agree yeah. more and we had this wonderful conversation everyone um, and look at Sarah today she's rocking the... stepped out the pink so <laughs> exactly give it a bit of a whirl give it a bit, a bit of a whirl of but it'll be interesting when we ask Sarah her mm. style words yes. because um, there might be a reason why she wears a lot of black mm. and for example today it, it looks like that she's expressing more of her passion and her mm. vibrancy so that's why um, yeah, chosen this option. Yes, yeah. It might have something to do with hanging around with me too. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. <laughs> I am the colour queen. Yes, as we can see here, which yes. we'll get into in a moment. So when it goes to style personality, there's a few words. So we want you to write down three mm. different words that represent your style personality. And here's some that I prepared earlier. Great. Um, mm. We have uh, classic elegant and groomed and I think you're right that does play into the black mm. side of things where I think of style icons and who I would like to um, you know imitate mm. and I have to look at those words however I do need to find the um, fine balance between step one and step three don't I? That's a good point and also there is a misconception that um, elegant and, and classic words mm. like that is only monochrome yes. only black white um, beige it's elegant is um, is more of a style mm. um, and also groomed, obviously. So, I mean, I'm sure you all agree that at, uh, Sarah is expressing all of those style mm. words and also her personality through the jacket she's wearing. Mm. So I couldn't I couldn't ask for a better example of oh, this three-step process. I'm glad. We've got um, Dipali as well. So bold, effortless and professional. They're oh, three words that work really well together. Wonderful words. Yes.
So um, hopefully you've written down step one, step two, step three. Now we need to go into what that all means. So um, we'll just stay on that slide for a moment yeah, because great. we want to see your clothes rack now. Um, <laughs> and we've got lots of examples here about how you can express your personality through those three steps. So first of all, what are you going to show us? Yeah, so bringing it all together. So this is why it's so good, the three-step process, mm. because it is breaking it down. Yeah. So looking at your three columns and then your three words from each, let's choose one word from mm. each column and now let's walk into our wardrobe and see how we can take one step to express this yes. uh, today. So if you don't mind me standing up, to get a bit more room to Go dive in. <laughs> so if we had the word, for example, uh, classic mm. and perhaps, yeah, polished yep. and then something like measured or refined and perhaps evening drinks. So mm. after work drinks, we can add a lovely tailored blazer here um, with some lovely piping. The thing is today it's not about colour, psychology, colours. It's not about dressing for body shapes. Um, what it purely is is showing examples of different items that can ex mm. represent your personal brand and your personal style. One thing I love as well mm. is here for the men online today, and um, lots of men in our office have actually gone this way, the happy socks as well. So. <laughs> I just show that there. Well, that's <laughs> it. The different personalities that you could represent through these as well. Exactly, Sarah. And the thing is with these happy socks is um, this is where you can let your environment shine. Mm. So, yes, you are a day in the office, but if you love sailing mm. or you love flamingos, <laughs> which these socks have, have flamingos on it, mm. um, you can wear some... Happy socks that represent that. Mm. And I also have a flamingo scarf here um, while we're on the topic. Why not? So if this was someone's style word of bold, maybe flamboyant, like mm. the Matt Preston, then this is a great example of flinging on the flamingo. Yeah. So what um, you briefly mentioned colour. Mm. So if I do wear something as bold as or as bright, mm. sorry, as this pink, what does that tend to represent? Or is colour something we should just avoid and just go for mm. these three steps? Yeah, great, great um, question. It's interesting, this one. Um, what I love about this is it's the bright neon pink, mm. but it's also quite a gorgeous uh, tailored shirt and it's actually 100% pure silk. Mm. So it's, got, it's still got that elegance about it. Yeah. Um, this is a great shirt because a similar shirt was um, purchased by one of my clients and it's because she was wearing a lot of corporate wear, mm. um, but she actually got invited to go to Silicon Valley to meet all the oh, yeah. heads there. And she wanted to express uh, some polished professionalism, but she wanted to be uh, a bit quirky, a bit out yeah. there to meet all the tech heads. So this is a perfect example mm. of a great shirt for her. And then what you can do is you can add a lovely black blazer on mm. top if you need to sort of create a little bit more um, classic polish professionalism mm. um, where, where you can still have your little neon pink popping out there. So this is great that you can um, layer it up and make it work for you depending on the environment. See yeah. that? That's quite lovely, isn't it? Yeah, that black does turn it down. Quite yeah, a bit. exactly. Um, so another example and this is where we can get quite creative, is I had a, uh, a client that her word was um, polished mm. and one of her personality words was inspiring. Okay. So what does that have to do with a top like this? Mm. It's, I, I, if you look, I don't know if you can see it up close, it's got sort of glistening Sparkle. little sparkles. Mm. So when we look at that, that's quite for me, quite inspiring, mm. quite, it's glistening, it's polished, like polished silver, it mm. glistens in the sun. So in a way, you can really let your imagination go regarding how you can express your personality and your style personality through the clothes you wear. And you could easily add a silver necklace just to add a little mm. bit more um, sparkle. 
I think that I really like the idea of that signature mm. piece. Like you said, now looking back, people I know or people I have known, mm. um, even one of my childhood friends, um, her mum, she is um, a nurse, so she has to wear white all the time. Ah. But she does, um, she dyed her hair grey a long time ago and she really embraces it. But mm. orange is her signature thing. So every time I see her, whether she's come home from work or whether yes. she's out, there's something orange on her and it's like her signature piece, which I think is great if you do want to express a little bit of personality when you might not be allowed to, if that ah, makes sense. Ah, that's great. Mm. Yeah, exactly. And that's a good point is, you know, what is one thing that we can express uh, and you can dial it up or dial it down yeah. for the occasion? Um, what are you known for? And it can shift and change. Mm. Um, for example, uh, with myself, I... I only wear lippy at the moment. I love, I've got about 20 MAC lipsticks. I'm a makeup artist as well, so I've got a little treasure trove, yes. uh, which I've brought along a few today. But that's my thing at the moment. Um, but that could shift and change mm. soon. But I've almost made that my signature piece, like yep. Clover Moore and her choker necklace. Mm. Um, and what about yourself, Sarah? Do you... Do you feel like you have a signature piece or are you more shifting and changing depending on yeah, the environment? I don't really think I have... A, I think one of my less... Like, the opposite of a signature mm. piece is I don't wear a lot of jewellery, ah, if that makes sense. Yes, so yes. I'm sort of the opposite, which I think plays into, um, you know, my style personality mm. a bit. I don't really like the over-the-top um, jewellery that I find... You know, I just don't feel comfortable in it. Yes. So I've made a decision not to really wear it and I'll just wear studs or something like that. That's great. So I don't know if that's part of it. Yeah, yeah. and in a way that's a really good point is that... It doesn't necessarily mean we have to add things. Mm. Um, like, what was it, Coco Chanel or someone said about, um, you know, elegance is getting dressed and then removing one thing. Something away from that. Yes. Yeah. So, and that's the thing. We don't need to put more and more things on to express our personal, mm. personal style. It's about choosing one or two things that really stand out mm. and letting them talk. Mm. What about the men? Oh, the, the men, gentlemen. Yes. We can't leave the men out. No, and, you know, I work with a lot of men and I just admire a, a guy that actually um, makes a decision to mm. uh, make this a priority yep. um, because it, it really, as we've discussed about first impressions, and it also, um, this is all an extension of your personality, mm. so why not show it off? Um, so with the men... I'm finding in Sydney especially that dress codes um, at work have become a lot more casual. Yes. Uh, so what are great ways for men to be able to be smart casual at work mm. um, and still show their personality? So we've got the the navy chinos, so they're great as a base. Mm. Um, and these chinos are a little bit more um, adventurous. Mustard. Yes, love mustard. Mm. Um, they're all the rage. And then pairing it with a shirt, mm. we could go for the plain blue and that's great um, or you can add a little print as well. Um, see the little dots here? Yeah. So a great thing for men is to be able to express their personality through their shirts, through their socks mm. um, and through um, a variety of other things. With men, there's um, obviously a more limited amount of wardrobe pieces that yes. you experiment with. But in a way, that makes it even more exciting because um, you have limited choice, but you can really make the most of each piece. Mm. Also, I think it's important for men to invest in pieces that last because we want to make sure they're quite robust. But also, if men have limited choices, then it's best to invest in those key pieces mm. and make them last. Um, for example, we've got these lovely Edward Green shoes that oh, cost um... a small fortune over here, um, but they're beautiful suede brown. Is that great, how you do it? <laughs> Lovely hand gesture. I might even join you as well. Uh, so these are great because um, a small fortune, but get them rehealed every few years and they will last you, mm. um, you know, 10, 20 years even. I don't know if people can, it's not um, a suede, is it, the texture? Yes. So it's a little bit less 
formal than your typical leather. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, and I think especially um, for a lot of men as well, because you think in a lot of workplaces mm. you've got casual Fridays as well. So, you know, from 9 to 5, Monday to Thursday, people dress mm. a certain way, then they really get to express themselves. Yes. It would be good to see, a little, like you said, that consistency. So if you do have casual Fridays and all of a sudden you come dressed as a different person, how do you sort of create that kiss consistency throughout the week? That's a great question. Yeah. And the thing is, with all of this, is it is about picking one thing, starting with one thing mm. that you can be consistent in or a consistent colour or a consistent piece. And going from there. And going from there. Um, so, for example, with the men, um, perhaps adding a blazer um, when needing to go to a meeting. And mm. here are some tie options as well. I, I would love men to rock the ties a bit a more. A little bit more. That is um, nice. I know in Sydney, obviously, we live on the beaches. Um, uh, I know Melbourne is a little bit more dressier, mm. I find. Um, but there's so many great tie options and I wouldn't discount it, guys. Mm. It's interesting, I had um, I did a workshop last week, uh, a corporate workshop, and one of the men said there that one of the um, global corporations, which I won't name, they actually have a leave the tie at the door policy. Wow. Yes. So that's an interesting thing because we need to dress for the environment. Um, so mm. if your clients, for example, are, um, you know, maybe in the creative industry or something where they don't wear um, exactly. A three piece suit and a tie, then perhaps they may get a little bit intimidated or perhaps they will um, perceive you as something that you're not by what you are wearing. Mm. So that actually comes to another point is make sure you do your research. Mm. Make sure you do your research on where you are going, who you are meeting, what company you are going into, yep. and see whether you can align your your personal brand with that regarding the environment that you're in. Mm. So making sure that you give yourself the advantage of making that first impression with impact. Great. Yeah. And I think you're right. Every environment is so different, um, especially mm. for people in, I know you do a lot of work um, with young sales professionals as yes. well, you know, when they're first getting into the workforce, mm. I think it's important that they understand their style, but also the organisation and industry they're entering, entering and who they're actually going to be selling to, because I think perception yeah. can be everything in that, that situation. I think that's mm. a great point. And in fact, um, again, I was told by a client who is quite senior at another global organisation that the graduates came in um, the week mm. before and she told me she was she couldn't believe it, her jaw dropped to the ground because the graduates looked like they were about to go clubbing. <laughs> they were dressed in the tiniest little skirts. Um, yeah, and the guys had no idea what mm. they were wearing. It, it just looked like a shambles and she said that perhaps that's up to the company... Yes. To really make it clear from the outset what is expected of them, of them with their style mm. and how they present themselves. So this is why dress codes are really important in a company. You know, having a dress code, having a book that you give to new mm. employees yep. to show them what you know, what is expected. And we're not talking about, you know, you must wear a tie that's, you know, this many inches yeah. or, you know... You there's have a fine to, line. There's <laughs> a fine line. But at the same time, just giving, um, giving the tools to be able to work from regarding where they can start at, what base they can start at, and then yeah. building from there with your personality and your style. Great. So um, thank you for showcasing that. I hope that's given everyone out there a bit of an idea as to how things go with what and how you can start to represent your style. Yes. Before we go to Q&A, and we've got mm. a lot of questions that we'll ask um, before the event, but please type in your questions now. We mentioned some actionable takeaways. So behind, besides that three-step process, which I think is fabulous, what are some things that we can go home and do as soon as we get home and just start fresh? 
Spring clean. Yes, spring clean. And how poignant that we yeah. are in spring. <laughs> so let's look at the, the challenge and I call it the DRE challenge. Ah, oh, see, it's like Dr. Dre challenge. Yes, <laughs> exactly. I was going, yeah, I was going to put up a picture of Snoop Dogg. <laughs> But uh, I thought, no, no, let's keep it. Let's keep the uh, clothes yeah. theme going. Yeah. But let's think of the DRE and let's think of it as D, ditch. Okay. So what can you ditch when you walk into your wardrobe tonight that is not serving you? Is it that grey cardigan that's been sitting idle? Is it a, a shirt that's got a few little bits of rough worn edges that you just need to get rid of mm. what is one thing that you ditch that is not serving you the r is replace mm. replace it with something Re replace that or replace something that is being well loved maybe you have those black pair of heels that you always wear to work that are looking a bit scruffy mm. maybe it is that um that suit that you know is a little bit getting a bit old yes they're loved, but it's time to replace them. Mm -hmm. And then the E is embrace. So what is one thing that you can embrace in your wardrobe that you either see in your wardrobe or you need to purchase that brings you closer to expressing your personal brand? So that is a DRE uh, challenge. Yeah, it sounds quite therapeutic and it can be challenging. And I think one of the things, um, there's a lot of charities out there. When I do a wardrobe refresh, I yes. go and give a lot of my clothes to charities. Yes. And it is sort of, it does make the process a lot easier because I used to struggle in ditching um, any mm. items from my wardrobe because, oh, yeah, it'll come back in fashion. It'll, you know, it's a yeah. full circle. It'll come back around. But going out there and actually giving why you're actually going through this process, I think, is a great way to sort of handle it if you need some help like I do. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful thing to say, Sarah. That's exactly it. It makes it more palatable. Exactly. Ditching when you know it's going to a good home. Yeah. yeah. Um, so one thing I want to do now, first of all, is thank you for your amazing insights and advice. I think it's been excellent. Um, we are going to go to some questions now and we've got a lot that have come through, so we'll get to those. If you do need to leave, we do understand. Um, please feel free to complete the survey. Um, within that, um, just let us know your feedback and what you thought about today's session um, and Annie you actually do this for a living within corporate organisations so if you think where's my buzzer um, yes. if you think um, people if you think people within your organisation yes. or your team could benefit for one of these sessions um, here's a little offer for people who do yeah. want to embrace this and I think making the world a more fashionable place or something that's relevant to our personality can only do good can't oh it? that's it Sarah yeah. thank you yes so I'm offering a free one hour style audit for your company mm. or your department um, so I come in have a chat to you all have a look at how your organization is um, presenting in itself even through you know who's there um, on reception what mm. are they what image are they expressing so this is a one hour style audit with a uh, report that I will present to you or for a one-on-one, -on -one, a 30-minute mm. consult. Yep. Um, so we'd love to have a chat to you. I would love you to send through your images of what you've ditched. Yeah, that'll um, be fun. And, yeah, please keep in touch. Um, so I've got a special link, um, anniesophie.com slash redback. Uh, also, I'm on social media, Annie Sophie mm. Style on LinkedIn and Instagram, Annie Sophie on Facebook. Great. So some questions now. Um, so one that came through earlier, how do you recover from a bad first impression? Ah, uh, that's, <laughs> <laughs> that's a really great mm. question. This is the thing, is that it can take hours, days, months, years mm. to recover from a bad first impression. It really depends and that's why this is so important mm. uh, to make sure that you are putting your best foot forward. The thing is, though, all is not lost. All is not lost. What you need to do is um, recoup, um, look at, you know, what happened. Um, we also know, and, I mean, I had this issue this morning, uh, <laughs> all the best laid plans can come undone. Um, I wanted to make, obviously, a great first impression on you all. Um, and whether you like, whether I like yeah. it or not, you've judged me. 
and that's fine. But I bought some beautiful Italian um, stockings and I had them on and then I got an enormous ladder in them. Uh, they got caught on the Manly Ferry um, life jacket uh, under the seat. Of course they did. <laughs> so therefore, you know, I obviously, my priority was to make a great first impression, mm. so I ran out and got another pair of stockings. But the thing is, we can't control yes. the situation. But what I will say is there is one thing that you can control and that is what you wear. Mm. So really make that a priority regarding mm. a first impression um, because therefore um, at least you are controlling and making a choice about that aspect. And always be ready for the unexpected, I think. Yes. Um, you know, any you might not have meetings or you might not have to be out in the, mm. you know, to see customers or something or anything in one day, but just always be prepared that that might come up. I think that's a good point as well. That's great. And Sarah, um, Sarah and I discussed this last mm. week. There was a, a really... Um, a really popular post on LinkedIn um, mm. regarding a, a man in the US with his team on a flight and they were all suited and booted with their ties and suits and he said, wow, it's so important to make an effort yes. even if you're catching a flight because you never know who you're going to sit next to. So he said he has... He has um, brokered deals, millions and millions of dollars worth mm. of deals, just because of these off-the-cuff situations. Yeah, that have just suddenly come up. Yes. You just never know, do you? And what is the impact if we don't prioritise our image, do you think? Mm. And that's, um, that's similar to what we were saying before, is that if you, if you don't want to prioritise it, then why? Mm. Well, let's look at the why there. Let's look at the whole personal branding um, elements like the passions, the visions, the values. We all have our priorities in our life. The thing is, though, they interweave with each mm. other. So if your one of your priorities is to, you know, get that job promotion or it is to maybe meet your life partner, then what, what are ways that I can do, what are things I can do to bring me closer to mm. that? So what I'm saying, though, is... There is one choice that we can make each day that yes. is really simple and easy and that is how we present ourselves. Mm. So I think make it a priority. Yep. I think just start looking at it in a way that's not this big I uh, need to change my whole image. It's about looking in your wardrobe and just choosing one thing that mm. really resonates with you and expresses your personal brand. Based on those steps. I think that's really exactly. important. Yeah. Um, and branding in a less corporate environment from Susan. And I think mm. we sort of touched on that by little subtle ways, mm. um, you know, whether it's the socks or whether it is something yeah. that, you know, that one thing that can really help you stand out and it is your signature, perhaps. That's it, yes. And in a way, um, it's interesting that we are becoming a little bit more casualised in the workplace. So, in a way, that becomes even more of a, a gold mine, and you know, stepping on all sorts of things because what is appropriate, uh, it's almost too much choice. Yes. Um, so again, looking at how we can still look polished and professional in a casual workplace. Mm. So, for example, you know, wearing the bright coloured shirt but with a blazer over the top, um, and then taking the blazer off when you, you mm. know, having morning coffee. Um, you can even do a little leopard print here um, as a little bit of fun, but also, you know, keeping a heel on it um, with the guys. You know, just adding that, that shirt that creates a little bit of something. If you want to not stand out, though, that's another question, is, mm. you know, what if you don't want to stand out? The thing is, standing out doesn't mean wearing bright colours mm. or crazy prints. Standing out means expressing your true self standing out and making your mark that's in yes. line with your personality and your style. Definitely. So if your words are, you know, measured, logical um, and, you know, polished professional, then, wow, there's so many options for you to mm. be able to express that and still stand out. 
Definitely agree. Yeah. Well, that brings us to the end um, and we've got one minute to go. So I'll thank you again because it's been great um, just to hear about how we can take away these actions and actually apply them today um, for ourselves, but also just to showcase the platform with some props. I think it's the first time we've done it here. So thank you so much for bringing everything in. Um, thank you, everyone, for joining. Like I said, if you do want to hear more from Annie, please feel free to contact her or complete the survey where you can opt in to receive more information. Thank you once again for joining today's webcast. Um, we will send you a copy of the recording within 48 hours. And thanks once again to our amazing host. It's been great having you with us. Oh, thank you, Sarah. Sarah, and wonderful to be here with you all. Great. Enjoy the rest of your day and we'll see you next time on our Business Skills Series.